Hi, welcome to this latest edition of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about pinhole DNS. And sometimes you just don't want to respond out of your primary name server zone files for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, you could have a particular subset of, of clients and you want, to re you want them, when they ask for a request uh, for uh, FQDN, you want them to go to a different IP than maybe a different group of people. And so um, you can accomplish this with, uh, in bind servers with, uh, uh, with a, a, a server view. And so it's a, a view into that, uh, that zone file that, that gives uh, a different answer. Um, and then, you know, so you can do that with a single resolver in bind. Uh, with Microsoft DNS, it actually requires a separate resolver. And so there's different solutions you can do in your name servers themselves. Uh, but a solution that I'm gonna talk about today is a way that you can do that with iRules. Before we get to that, some of the use cases uh, that you would use for pinhole DNS is creating a captive portal or redirecting uh, connections uh, to an alternate uh, location so that uh, uh, you can uh, do uh, single sign-on uh, via pass-through. Another one is redirecting users to uh, alternate servers for um, uh, being able to uh, do access control um, the solution that we're going to talk about today is, is the um, kind of emulating static host files. And so for things like iPads, um, iPhones, uh, you can't manage the static host entries for that. So uh, in our use case, we have, uh, at least in our use case, when I manage the Dev Central environment, we had a big IP uh, with uh, APM on it. And in the back of that, we had our production uh, Dev Central website. And then we also had our staging servers. And then we also had our test servers. And if I wanted these resources to be able to get to those assets, um, you know, how, was I gonna, how am I going to uh, solve that? And so because um, these iPads and, and iPhones uh, are going to use uh, whatever DNS servers they have. So, you know, I can define in the APM when they connect, you know, the network access function. I can define the DNS server in here. And so my two options are in my DNS servers, and I'd say, you know, I extend my DNS down here. I can have my DNS servers here, and I could actually manage that here but I didn't really want to change my name servers for a couple uh, different test and, and staging domains that were different. Didn't want to stand up whole domains in my name servers to manage that. So what we did is in this network access, we defined the DNS server as the VIP with an I rule. And so that VIP sits here and the I rule is out here. And so when a connection would come in from our mobile testing devices that, that you can't manage static entries on, uh, it, you would connect to the VPN, uh, to APM, and then it would DNS requests for these test assets would hit the VIP, and the I rule would process those. And if the I rule does not match these names, then it would just send it back to these DNS servers and then it would get its response and come out. All good. If there was a scenario where the DNS, so we could say uh, for test.dc.local. And so, you know, we wanted to hit that. Well, it would come through here in the I rule and the I rule would match that and the I rule would then directly respond with that address so that it could come over here, um, now that DNS request is done, and it could actually come over here and hit these test resources. And so um, there are a couple, uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, Joel Moses has an excellent iRule out in the code share that has um, the DNS license, or the DNS services license, and he uses those actual events and, and uh, excuse me, the events and the uh, the names, the DNS namespace to be able to manage all of this. And it actually does a lot more than what I'm showing here. Uh, in my case, I didn't have the DNS services license, so I just used binary decodes 
to be able to read those I rules uh, or be able to read those requests and respond to them. And so I've got a solution in an article that I'll link. Um, I'll also link to Joel Moses's uh, excellent uh, code share post. Um, so hopefully this has been instructive on, on what pinhole DNS is and some of the different use cases that you can use. And uh, we'll see you out there in the community.